Literally, as soon as I sat down to record this video, I saw someone walking with their dog in front of my window. I am on the first floor of this new apartment I'm living in, and I'm just trying to get used to it. Where am I supposed to record my videos? I don't know. I am here today to kind of get back in the swing of things. I left West Virginia where I was doing my AmeriCorps service maybe two weeks ago or so, and I've just been like coming back down to Florida, setting up my new room, which maybe you'll see eventually it's kind of a big mess right now but i do have a stack of books that i have accumulated probably in the past two months or so mostly at library book sales and at goodwill aka i spent probably less than maybe eight dollars on all these books here and i have a few from the library too which i went to the new library here and i'm very excited to say that there are seven library locations in the same distance as I had two last year and again one of those libraries was super tiny and the other one was like 15 miles away and now the library is so close and I'm so excited because it's beautiful it's ginormous and there are so many branches when you live in a big city you tend to kind of take for granted the fact that you have all these things available to you that people in rural areas and smaller cities and towns don't really have access to so I will start with first the stuff that I got from good Will and library book sales. This is Olive Kittredge by Elizabeth Strout. This won the Pulitzer Prize and they made a, I believe, HBO series of it. And the woman who played Olive Kittredge won a bunch of awards during the Emmys and stuff. It's always been on my mind like I wanted to watch that series and then I saw this book there so I just took it. Uh, it's pretty short so I'll probably read it eventually. Um, the Weaver the Mulvaney's by Joyce Carol Oates. I've never actually read anything by Joyce Carol Oates but it's an author that's definitely been kind of pushed as like an author you really need to read at least once in your life and Oprah also loves this book. I heard about this book from Climb the Stacks, Ashley from Climb the Stacks. She talked a lot about this and how all of these family uh, relationships and kind of how the past and the present collide. There's like one event that kind of changes this family uh, and following this family through that uh, event. This one's a little bit longer but I am looking to read more stories about families. For that reason I'm really excited to get to this one. I got another book which is kind of like an impulse get mostly because the cover was really nice in really great condition. The Other Bowling Girl by Philippa Gregory. I've never read anything by Philippa Gregory. Uh, again, she's kind of really well known for these kind of historical uh, fiction novels. I do want to read a historical fiction kind of drama with some romance in it, uh, and I have heard that Philippa Gregory is the best at that. And the last from the Goodwill Hall is this beautiful copy of Of Mice and Men. I read this book in high school. That was a really long time ago, and I saw it. It's actually a really, really pretty cover, and I thought, you know, I should reread Of Mice and Men and see if it still holds up as a great classic. It'll probably be an interesting experience just because I've changed so much since high school and I would like to see if I still would love Of Mice and Men as much as I did when I was in like 9th or 10th grade. The next three are from the library book sale. Kind of going along with Of Mice and Men and reading stuff from high school, I found The K by Theodore Taylor, which I don't remember if I read this in middle school or the beginning of high school, um, but I do remember it was like a signed reading for school. I just love this book. I think for the majority of it we heard on audio in class. I just remember like how much of an impact this had on the way I saw the world. Um, I have really vivid memories of what I thought about the ending of this book and I obviously I still remember the endings so it definitely left a mark. So I'm excited to reread this book and see if again like Of Mice and Men it holds up today. If you don't know what the K is about, this kid gets shipwrecked with this West Indian man who kind of helps him survive. I know somebody is blind in this book and that is very important to the plot and the story. I don't remember much of what happened in the beginning and middle of the story. I definitely remember what happens in the end. So I kind of want to refresh my memory. The next book I have here is Firefly Lane and this is by Kristen Hanna. This is the same author that wrote Nightingale, I want to say it's called. And I've heard just so many great things about Kristen Hanna's writing style and how talented she is. So I saw this one, again, really cheap, in really great condition, and the back of it kind of sealed the deal for me. It focuses on these girls who are friends in the 70s. They say they're going to be best friends forever, but the book 
continues on decades after that and kind of seeing how their relationship has evolved over time. I'm really interested to see how the story will play out. I'm also excited to see girl on girl friendships and I just hope that Kristen Hanna is as great a writer as many people say that she is. Last from the book haul is the book I was probably most excited to find out of all of these and that was The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. This is by Rebecca Sklute. In this book I have been into for I don't know more than a year I have been looking for this book. I can't believe that I paid like a dollar for it and that made me so excited too because it's like brand new like why are people just throwing away these books that are gonna be so amazing. This book focuses on Henrietta Lacks who has been used in medical studies. Her cells were able to uh, continue to be used to be tested because they didn't die after a while so her cells are immortal in that way. It says uh, doctors took her cells without asking. Those cells never died. They launched a medical revolution in a multi-million dollar industry. More than 20 years later, her children found out. So Rebecca Sklute follows the, her family when they find out about this. Rebecca becomes really attached to Henrietta Lack's daughter, and I'm just very excited to see kind of how, how that family's life has been changed because of all of this, and all the interrelating things that play into this, including race, because this happened in the 50s. Kind of has all of those topics that I enjoy reading about and learning about. Uh, so for that reason, this is the book I'm most excited about. I started actually reading it already and I am 20 pages in, but I haven't come back to it and I just really need to start focusing on it. Probably when my life gets more subtle than I know what the heck I'm doing here. And last but not least, I have three books from the library, three graphic novels from the library. Uh, I actually already read one of them, and that is Giant Days Volume 1. This is by John Allison, and it's illustrated by Lisa Trayman. It follows three girls who start going to college. It doesn't really have like a structure, like an arc. Maybe the arc will actually start in volume two but it was still enjoyable to read about these three girls and kind of all the mischiefs and um, little things that they get into i really enjoyed the artwork as well it is very cartoony very colorful the next one is seconds and this is by brian lee o'malley he's the same person who wrote scott pilgrim which i've started and i'm probably on like volume three or four but i have heard that seconds is really really great it's also a one-off so i don't think i'm gonna have to continue reading like i was with scott pilgrim i'm I'm really excited to get into this. I've just heard so many beautiful things about it. And Brian Lee O'Malley's artwork is also really interesting. And the last one I have to show you is Kill My Mother, and this is by Jules Pfeiffer. I don't remember much about this one. It says, Kill My Mother centers on five formidable women from two unrelated families linked fatefully and fatally by a has-been hard-drinking private detective. I think what really drew me to this is the way that it's drawn. The artwork is unusual for graphic novels. It's just different. So that made me want to give it a shot. And I have definitely heard of wonderful things about Kill My Mother. So I think this one's the one I'm going to read next, actually. And as I am finishing filming this video, it has started to rain outside, so you might be hearing some raindrops. That's pretty much all I have for you today. Hopefully this video is good enough for me to get back into the hang of things. I have some tags that I have been tagged to do that I haven't done yet, which I'm going to get to eventually. Um, and I just want to get back in the hang of things of reading more regularly because I haven't really read a book in like a month before I read that graphic novel last night. But yeah, for now, I'll say goodbye and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye. Stop Florida if it's not raining every day in August.